chondrules have large variations in their isotope compositions. Now these variations not only depend on the isotope we look at, but also on the process that produced these variations. Now this plot here collects all the isotope data we currently have from chondrules. On the x-axis is the isotope composition as delta notation, but without a pseudo unit here, so no um, per mil here or something like this. This is because the ranges are so different. And if you would plot this all with the same range, then some of the ranges would be very, very small. So up here in this, uh, these three sectors in the, in the upper sector, this is the real delta notation. So this is per mil then down here. In the middle sector, we need to multiply all this by 10. So it's not 1, 2, 3, but 10, 20, 30. And in the lowest sector, it's times 100. So it's 100, 200, 300, or minus 100, minus 200, and so on. So this is how to read this plot. So this means if we start with nitrogen 15 down here, that nitrogen 15 has a variation between almost minus 160 to plus 160 per mil. It is a light element, it is a highly volatile element, and this shows this very large range here. Also this is a solid line. This means the dominant process producing this fractionation is mass dependent. And the other one in this legend here, the dashed line, means it is mass independent. Mass independent usually is mixing of components. And in most cases this is adding some pre-solar material with a largely different isotope composition to this chondrule. So if you then look in the, in the next sector here, so there we have lithium, boron and oxygen as light elements and also volatile elements plus a more heavy element, potassium-41, but it is also highly volatile. And these have still large variations of tens to up to 100 and a little more per mil. So also light element and volatile elements have very large um, variations in the isotope composition. And this is due to mass-dependent fractionation, like for example kinetic fractionation. And then we can go into the upper part here. And there, this is divided into, all these are the solid lines, so this is all mass-dependent, and all this up here is mass-independent, so this is always dashed lines. Now the first thing we can observe here is that the mass-dependent variations are generally much larger than those that are the variations that are mass independent. And we can observe these kind of um, fractionations here in, in magnesium, silicon, calcium, iron, zinc, strontium, and cadmium. And again, elements like, for example, cadmium, which is highly volatile, has a very large variation. But still, all these variations are about an order of magnitude smaller than the others down here. And uh, in general, many of these elements are a little bit lighter than all these elements up here, which are mass or isotopes which are mass independent and which in cases of maybe barium up here or chromium here really have quite small variations. Small does mean it is not important. It's just that these variations here are much smaller. And um, it also needs to be said that oxygen down here is shown as mass independent because in oxygen, it's a little bit a special case, in oxygen there is the mass dependent fractionation, but there's also a mass independent fractionation here. This is uh, the slope one line in the three oxygen isotope plot. And then there might be some general things you can observe here. So maybe the um, in the um, in the, in the mass-dependent fractionations, these seem to be in chondrules always a little bit lighter here. Maybe there's also maybe some um, deviation in the in the mass-independent, but this is a little bit bit more tricky. And um, this is not a place to go into too much detail here. This is more to show how the chondrules vary in their isotope composition, and these can then be used for a large variety of interpretations that need to be um, gone through in, in more detail and step by step. So this is isotope composition of chondrules.